Another day, another cringy Cadence tutorial. Welcome to the fourth video in our series of how to go from zero to hero Cadence development. And in this video, we're going to learn how to... Whoa, that was uncalled for, and I have no idea how that ended up in the video. But it did, and so we're going to live with it. Also, I want to make a note. I just recorded this whole video and realized that it wasn't recording my screen. So I'm losing it over here. But let's get into the, uh, the tutorial here. So it's day four. We've learned what uh, smart contracts are. We've learned what transactions and scripts are. But we haven't actually looked at Cadence code yet. And so that's what we're going to do today. We're going to start learning some syntax. We're going to start learning how to actually make our own contract and transaction and script. So that's what we're going to do today. Now, I want to make a note really quick. Um, we're going to start getting into some Cadence syntax and learning how to actually code. Uh, one thing I want to note is that usually when you're learning a new programming language, uh, you know, usually you'll look up like Cadence Syntax, teach me Cadence Syntax. I've always tried to stay away from just making a video on Cadence Syntax and walking through all the syntax. And the reason for this is because I think that when you watch a video like that, it's very easy for that information to go in and out of your head very, uh, you know, easily. And, um... I think instead, what usually works better is when uh, I actually walk through real examples and we learn syntax over time so that you actually understand what the syntax is really doing and when to use it. Um, so that's like, you know, making functions, uh, types of variables. We're going to learn that along the way on our journey instead of me just dumping everything into one video. And I think that'll help provide some context. All right, I'm sorry for the long intro. Let's get right into it. So. We're going to make our own contract. Now, the way you do this in Cadence is public contract, hello world, okay? Now, what this is doing is this is called an access modifier. So pub means public, and a lot of the times you'll see access all or something like that. These mean the exact same thing, pub and access all. What it means is that, uh, in, well, in, the, in terms of a contract, it doesn't really mean anything special because your contracts will always be defined like pub contract or access all contract. So this is how you make your contract and you put your contract name third, right? So pub contract, hello, uh, hello world in this case. Now, um, in a previous video, I was saying that in a contract, you have your state and you also have your logic. So we're going to separate that uh, to kind of help us out on our journey as well. All right, so here we are. So what we're going to do is we're going to add some state. Um, and this state is going to be, uh, let me just type this out and I'll explain it. So pub let greeting be a string. So look at the syntax here. This is how you define a variable in Cadence. So you provide an access modifier. This is called public let. So this is either let or var. Let means it's a constant. So, um, you know, in other programming language, you, you would see something like const or a constant. That is exactly what a let is in Cadence. So let means that you can't change your variable once you've initialized it. And greeting is the name of the variable. And then colon string is how you specify a type in Cadence. So colon string. And this means that this greeting is a string. Okay. And public, what public means? Uh, public means that, so this is an access modifier. Um, and public means we can read this variable from everywhere um, and so I'm gonna go I'm gonna make an entirely separate video on access modifiers because they're so important um, but for now all you need to know is that public means that this variable is viewable from everywhere so it's in the contract in the transaction which is outside of the contract in scripts everywhere but it's only readable but I'm uh, sorry but only writable uh, inside the scope it's defined. So because we've defined this at the topmost level of the contract, it's only writable within the contract. Um, and so we'll go over that in a bit, but just to kind of explain what public uh, means. All right, cool. Now look, it's giving us an error. Missing initializer for field greeting in type hello world. So when you deploy a contract to the blockchain, um, what you're actually doing, you know, you're putting your, your contract out there. And once it's out there, because the blockchain is public, anybody can go and read your contract, right? Because this is public, anyone could read this, right, on the blockchain. Um, 
And so we have to provide greeting with an initial state, right? It can't just be nothingness because then people wouldn't be able to interact with our contract in a correct way, right? So we have to give this an initial state. And in Cadence, you do that uh, inside of a contract using something called an init function. So it's init and then and, and then parameter and then these uh, parentheses and then uh, open brackets. And inside of the init is where you have to initialize all of your state. And the way you do that is by doing self dot and then the name of the uh, variable and then we're going to initialize it to hello world. Okay. And now it's uh, not complaining anymore. And so what self means to explain self. Self means the thing at the at the next level above of where we uh, were re referring to it. So in this case, we're inside of a function, and self means go to the level just above this one, which is, uh, you know, if you were to think of yourself as standing inside this function, it's the level just above, which is inside the contract in this case. That's what self means. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, deploy this contract to the blockchain. Uh, and it says deployed to 0x01, right? So here we are. This contract now lives at 0x01, and greeting has an initial state of hello world. And why don't we actually check that? So we're right now we're in script templates. So this is a script, and we're going to uh, make a simple script. And what we're going to do is we're going to import hello world, so the hello world contract from account 0x01, because that's where we imported, uh, deployed it to. And we're going to make a uh, simple script. And the way you do this is by defining a function called main in your script. Um, so the syntax for a function in Cadence is public, which is the access modifier, but we'll go over other access modifiers eventually. But public, meaning this is callable from anywhere. Function, which is, uh, or fun, which is for a function. The name of the function. Um, and then in your script, you know, you could pass in parameters, but we're not going to do that just yet. And what this means, this colon string, is it means this function returns a string. So that's how you do the return types. You have to do this if you're returning, is colon and the type of the return. So what we're going to do is we're going to return hello world dot greeting. And remember, this is allowed to happen because we said that this greeting is public, which means it's readable from anywhere. So let's go back to our script and execute the script. Um, oh, and of course, it's the flow playground is very buggy, so you kind of have to like play around with it a little bit. Um, so uh, nothing was actually wrong there; it just was buggy. So when we execute the script, look what it does. It says that the return, the result, was a value "hello world," which is exactly what we thought it was. Perfect. Now, what we want to do is let's also try and run a sample transaction. Um, so we're in transaction templates now, but you know, transactions are usually used to change the state of the blockchain. So in, in where we currently are, we can't actually change greeting in the transaction because, like I said, it's only writable inside the scope it's defined. And we haven't defined anything in this contract to, tra to change greeting yet. So we can't change it. So let's actually add some logic to do that. So public function, this is how you make a function. We're going to call it change greeting. And we're going to, uh, what I sometimes do, like to do for parameters is I just like to do something like this, like, uh, actually, I'm not going to do that because that's, that's going to be a little confusing, but I'll, we'll call it new greeting. And this is going to be a string, and it, uh, we're going to open this up with brackets. And so, just like you saw in the script, functions and cadence have the access modifier, which public for a function means it's callable from anywhere, fun, which for a function, the name of the function, and then parameters in cadence are used, uh, what you do is you put the name of the parameter and then colon and the type. So colon string in this case, which means new greeting is a string. And remember back in the first video when I told you that Cadence is so great for developers because it makes it so hard to screw up, that's exactly uh, what we're uh, looking at here. So if you we were to ever pass a non-string to this function, then um, it would complain before it was even called. And so that's uh, really great for us. So let's actually change our greeting to the new greeting that we pass in. So self.greeting equals new greeting, right? Okay. So what this is going to do is uh, actually change our greeting, right? Self.greeting to this new greeting. And look, it's saying cannot assign to constant member. So that's because we made it let. Now remember, um, the other version that you would put here, if you wanted to be able to change it, is var. So var means we can actually change it. And look, now it's not complaining. So let's deploy uh, this new contract. And now inside of our transaction, let's try and modify uh, our uh, greeting state by calling the change greeting uh, function. 
So let's import hello world from the Xerox Zero One account. And the way you do transactions uh, in Cadence is you, it's uh, this syntax. So I'm going to write it out really quickly. Um, you would do uh, transact. I spelled it wrong. That's why. So transaction. Uh, the parameters for the for the transaction can be passed in here, and then uh, open uh, brackets. And so then there's two phases to a transaction. There's the prepare phase, which takes in a signer, who, uh, otherwise known as uh, the person responsible for this transaction, so the person paying for this transaction, um, and an execute phase, which takes in no parameters. So remember, the prepare phase of a transaction takes in a signer, and we'll, we're going to go into what auth account means in a different video. But signer is the person paying or, or the person responsible for this transaction because the transaction is changing the state of the blockchain. So let's just, uh, I don't know, let's just uh, log the signer.address just so we know we can verify who's calling it. Um, and then in our execute part, we're going to actually call this function. So it's change greeting and it takes in a new greeting. All right. So we're going to call hello world dot change greeting. And um, uh, what we have to do is when we're calling a function, you have to put the name of the, of the parameter and then what we actually want to pass in here. So what we can do is we can actually accept a parameter to our transaction called, I don't know, transaction uh, greeting. And this is going to be a string, right? Uh, and, we'll and what we're going to do is we're going to pass in transaction greeting. So, um, of course... Uh, it's being buggy again, so let me just reload the page, and now it's good. Okay. So look what's happening. It's giving us a box to actually put uh, our new greeting here. Um, so our transaction greeting, let's say we want it to be, um, I don't know, good goodbye world, right? So transaction greeting is going to get passed in here, and then we're going to take that and pass it in here. Now remember again, recurring theme and cadence. You have to put the name of the parameter here, and that's why the developer experience is so safe uh, for us to, because you, it makes you put it right. So let's you know do this with account four, and let's uh, let's see what happens. Um, let's send this right. So boom, it logged the signer to address, which is zero x four. Now let's actually verify that this changed our greeting. So let's go back to our view greeting and execute this, and look, it says goodbye world. So boom, we actually changed the state of the blockchain. So there's one last thing I wanted to mention in this video, and it's that with these parameter names, there's a trick in Cadence where what you can do is you can actually, um, well, well, let's actually see what happens, right? So if I were to get rid of this right here, look what happens. It's this missing argument label. So we need to make sure the argument label is there, right? And that this is called the argument label. But if we do this, where you put an underscore and a space, um, in front of your parameter, then if we were to redeploy this, right, so, so we update our contract, go back to our uh, transaction, and then we get rid of this, um, and we, we refresh because it's, it's a little buggy, we no longer need to put the argument label. So you can do that if you want, but in Cadence, it's always best practice to keep that uh, argument label in there. Okay, so this concludes uh, this video. I hope that was helpful. Um, and, uh, you know, we learned how to, you know, we learned some basic syntax around transactions and scripts. We learned how to make our own contract. We learned some, you know, how to make a function. We learned how to update some variables, what var and let are. We kind of learned what pub is. We'll get into access modifiers in a bit. But thanks so much for tuning in. I'm sorry this video was 13 minutes, and I'll see you in the next one.